I'm Nick Sheeler. I'm a herb keeper and a biologist with a passion for reptiles and amphibians. I want to bring you along on my adventures, looking at captive collections and breeding facilities, the most amazing reptile and exotic animal expos, field herping adventures, and informative presentations on the captive care and husbandry of reptiles and amphibians. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy watching Gecko Galaxy TV. Alright, so I've had a little bit of a crash in my cleanup crews, in my bioactive tubs that I set up last year. So as you can see, this is Quark's tub. There's some poo in there and it's molding a little bit, which means I've sort of lost my colony of uh, springtails and isopods. There just don't seem to be that many in here now. So it's possible that I let it get a little too dry at one point and that's what's happened. But I, uh, as you can see, the pothos is doing pretty well. These things are just unkillable. I mean, even if you darn near, near kill them and you water them, they come back. So, uh, before anybody says, this tub is empty. All the decorative stuff is out of it at the moment because I'm getting ready to reseed it with some springtails and some new powder orange isopods that I got in today. First thing I'm going to do, and this may be counterproductive because, you know, the cleanup crew eats this stuff, but I'm pretty sure there's some in here that I don't know about. Because I'm just going to, for my sake, to make me feel better, I'm going to get some of these pieces of junk out of here that I can actually see. Anything that looks like it's moldy or, you know, it's just blatant poop that hasn't been eaten up by what might or might not be left in here. So we'll just remove that. So the first thing I have to go in here are these springtails, tropical white springtails. Got a large 16 ounce culture. These guys are gonna do the bulk of the heavy lifting when it comes to doing the cleaning of uh, anything that could possibly get moldy. They'll also eat the poop and everything. Um, and so will the ice pods. The ice pods really like to eat the poop and we'll uh, show those next. So we'll go ahead and put some of these into Quark's enclosure. So as you can see, what I've done is I've put some dechlorinated water in this springtail colony. And as you can see, their little bodies are hydrophobic, so they float right to the surface, and this is going to give me an easy way to dump them in the enclosure and just sort of seed my bioactive enclosure with some more life. And then afterwards, I'll put them in a larger container with some of the same carbon media, and uh, uh, hopefully my colony will continue to grow from there so I can keep seeding as needed. But we'll just take and dump a little bit of these guys in there. And since I have the drainage layer set up, this water, excess water, will move through the soil and go down there. And we're not going to go too crazy. Just put a little bit in there. Because I need to seed several enclosures. So the other part of the cleanup crew are these powder orange isopods. And then I got a pack of 35 plus so they usually throw a couple extras in there to you know sort of cover any counting errors so there's you know a little more than 35 in here and I'm gonna spread them out between the enclosures so let's see if I can get just some of them off and into Let's just see how many we get out there. There's definitely one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. 
So they're going to be in there, just doing their thing. They've already disappeared, some of them. There's one. They're just going to move around, find a comfortable place under all this leaf litter and stuff. So the substrate in here is a um, ABG mix. So that stands for uh, Atlanta Botanical Garden Mix. Uh, it's got sphagnum moss, orchid bark, uh, cocoa fiber, and I think peat, peat moss, and then carbon is in. It's good to just sort of keep everything purified as the water runs down through the layers. So now we've got Orion's enclosure. This is it with everything inside of it. It's got some quite a few artificial plants. I still use artificial even though I have the live pothos in there. I just don't trust myself to keep a ton of plants alive. And I use these pieces of pool noodle as climbing areas for them. So we'll get some of this stuff out of here. And we'll get Orion who is right there. Really fired down, looking real white. He's a bit of a kook. But he's a big, beautiful gargoyle gecko. And there he goes. So we'll take him and we'll put him over here in this little. This is the little container that I use to keep him in while I'm cleaning and doing regular maintenance. You see the pothos is growing pretty wild in here. Daddy! Keep a water dish, Daddy! which appears to have some small springtails in it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dump it right in here on the plant. Daddy! All right, so we'll get, just check out these little hide areas, these cork barks, and see if there's anything living. And I told you, like, I have not seen any isopods or springtails really in a while. So I think I, I let most of my colonies crash. But other than that, these bioactive tubs have been really great. Um, see, there's a little bit of some moldy stuff down there, which the springtails will eat once they get established again. These bioactive tubs have been great. You can see the layers, and you can see I got a little bit of mold in there. So, But there's the, uh, the drainage layer of pea gravel, and then I've got my separation, and then the AVG mix. So let's go ahead and get the uh, springtails and ice pods in here. All right, so I've gotten the uh, <laughs> most of the stuff out of the isopods. Make it a little easier just to see how many we're getting in here at a time. Uh, one already got in. So there goes another one. Grab some of this sphagnum moss. So there's a couple there. Go ahead and let them go. Actually, more than a couple. More like four or five. Oh, there's a couple more. They're going to run around in there. Do their thing. And hopefully multiply. Keep a viable colony. We got tropical white springtails. Go ahead and just dump some in various places around the enclosure. Put some in here by the plants. Put some in over here. We'll start with that. And then we'll see if we need any more from there. I want to try to keep some of this culture and put it in my own old culture which has sort of gone downhill and see if I can get them up. They're not very hard to reproduce, so hopefully that works. All right, so I'm back with another enclosure. This is a Comet's enclosure. He's my crazy Dalmatian crested gecko. I don't really know exactly what to call him. I'll show him to you in a minute. He's down there. And uh, as you can see, this is his old food from just a couple days ago. Apparently, I still have uh, some Ar Armadillidium vulgari some isopods in this enclosure somehow they make their way into the food and die i don't even know what they, i guess they climb up the plants and get in there because they're attracted to the food so there's definitely still some 
some active culture in this, but I'm going to go ahead and seed it with some of the springtails and isopods anyway. And this is an opportunity to show you what I do with some of my artificial foliage. So you see this big fern here. Basically, I buy the big $5 ferns from Walmart that are connected to the large stems, you know, that you can stick into the foam for decorative plants. And I take them apart, and I stick these pipe cleaners through them and turn them into hanging plants. And just hook them right in to holes that I have soldering iron right into the side there. So I can take this plant off and clean it, which I do do periodically, and it needs to be rinsed off, so... I'll go ahead and rinse that off now. All right, so now that that plant's been taken out and rinsed and I got most of the decorations out, let's go ahead and flip this piece of cork bark and see if we have any friends. Hey, look, there's one Armadillidium vulgari isopod. So there's definitely some active in here. And I mean, this food was just put in there the day before yesterday. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Armadillidium vulgari, which have committed suicide in the gecko food so that's great interesting thing happened in this enclosure the other day and part of the reason i was provoked to buy new springtails and isopods you see i've got a little bit of some some mold spores in here so clearly the colony is not doing super hot and doing its job also i found a mushroom in here the other day and you can see there's another one trying to come out so I'm not going to take it out. I don't think it's it's detrimental to the gecko, and I'm pretty sure that once the springtails start coming back in here, they're going to take care of that. So if we look here, we've got a comet, one of my male crested geckos. This guy came from Pangaea. I bought him as a hand-picked adult, so I don't have any lineage on him. I requested a Dalmatian. He's definitely that. And he's just really unique. I really like him. I paired him with my girl, Elora, who is an olive Dalmatian last year. And we got some really nice little golden brindle Dalmatian spotted babies. So, he's a good guy. I like him a lot. So we'll take him over here. And we'll try to stick him in little holding enclosure and he's gonna jump all over me all right there we go get him to calm down a little bit try not to close him up in there we can help it there we go all right he's in so now we'll work on getting some new isopods in here Count them as we go here. I don't want to put too many, but I want to give it a little bit of something to go on. About four or five in there now. Six. Seven. Eight or so there. Still got a decent amount left in here I can keep going with. Now all my enclosures are not set up this way. I actually only have males set up this way right now. Um, for my purposes, I think it's going to work better. I like to keep my females on the paper towel and give them a specific lay box. That way I know that they're going to lay eggs in there. Otherwise, I'm trying to dig up this entire enclosure for a female and figure out where she laid eggs. Um, so it can be kind of tough. And that's sort of why I've avoided doing it as of now. So let's get our springtails back in action here if I can get the lid off like I said this lid is like super sealed on here very tight fitting lid which I guess is good All right. so here we go let's see if we can get some out Again, this is just dechlorinated water that I put in here, which, you know, the colonies do come with a little bit of water in there because springtails usually breed in water, which is why having a false bottom on these enclosures is good as they can multiply in there and then move up through the soil layers. And it's okay if a little bit of the 
charcoal gets into my enclosure. As you can see, there's still quite a few moving around in there. I've pretty much exacerbated all the water, so I've got some more dechlorinated water here. And we'll just dump a little bit in. So I can continue on seeding these enclosures as I go. Go ahead and stick the lids back on. And let's reassemble his tank and give him some food. All right, so Comet's enclosure is all back together. See, we got his cross beams in there. We got his nice freshly rinsed off fern. Other artificial plants, he's back in there. Got some fresh Pangea. And everything's been nicely misted down to make sure that not only he's happy, but the new cleanup crew that I put in there is also happy. So for the sake of not getting too repetitive, I figured I would just show you the finished product of this enclosure here. This is my last bioactive tub. And this one has also got a little bit going on, but hopefully those spring tails, like I said, will take care of it. This one is sort of the exception to my rule. It's the only bioactive tub that I have right now that has a female in it. And this is Redshift. She's self-produced. She's out of my pairing of Cork, who's my big Harlequin male, who I don't have any lineage on. And my female, Eleven, who is a red bicolor female produced by Kate's Colorful Crested originally and then purchased from 301 Cresteds. Doesn't look like much now because she's really fired down, but she is very red when she fires up. If I can get her to chin up a little bit, maybe. She's a pretty good girl. I can see that we have some pretty serious orange going on underneath. She's not going to cooperate. Take my word for it. She's pretty orange on the bottom. So we're excited to see what we can get out of her. Start working with the, some more red in our lines. But this is her enclosure. She's got some cork bark in there. Quite a bit of uh, artificial plants. Like I said, I don't like to try to keep too much stuff alive. But the pothos just takes off like a weed and does really well. And it's totally safe. So it's set up bioactive. It's got the ABG. It's got the drainage layer. It's got leaf litter in there for the isopods to munch on. She's a happy camper. So this was my springtail colony that I started last year and it was doing pretty well and then I started to let it get a little out of control. Um, but if I dig around and you look close, there are still some kids in here, so that makes me happy. So what I'll do, as you can see, I've got a mixture of some cocoa fiber and a lot of charcoal carbon in here. So I'm going to take the rest of the culture that I just bought and I'm going to dump it right on in there. And this thing is pretty dry so that water will do it some good. sure if there's any left in there can't really see but for good measure go ahead and dump the rest of our dechlorinated water in there throw the lid on good just a gentle swirl in case there's anybody clinging to the walls and then of course I have to call in the jaws of life to pry the lid back off <laughs> So it looks like just a handful in there. Too much. It looks like we pretty much got them all. So, so this six quart shoe box now will be my new colony. And it should grow really nicely. I had them growing really well and then I sort of let them go by the wayside. Unfortunately, I wasn't really using from the colony. so. I kind of let them go, and I really didn't want to do that, so we're going to keep uh, 
keep this one going, hopefully. I'm gonna go ahead and get some food for it. So people might be wondering, what am I feeding the uh, springtails in my colony, my culture? Um, and this is a trick that I, you know, picked up from the web just reading about doing bioactives. This is just plain old. It's a mix now of brown and white rice, but uh, I mean, you can use either or. Basically, I just take some grains of this uncooked rice and I just stick them all over the enclosure. I don't go too crazy. I just want a little bit of coverage. And they just eat this stuff up. And what it also does is as the moisture gets to it, it grows a little bit of mold, but they keep it under control. These things really like to eat mold. So uh, this hopefully should turn into a really nice thriving colony within the next several weeks. All right, so we are going to do a little bit of creative herpetoculture engineering today. I have a new gecko that I picked up yesterday, and I, I have two options for a feeding ledge. I have uh, one of the plastic, um, it's basically a sink rack that I buy from Walmart, and I can cut it down, and these little uh, cups that I use fit perfectly in there for food. Uh, the other option, I was at a pet store today, um, a larger chain pet store that shall not be named, and I... Uh, Got a little bit of cork bark, just some smaller pieces. Unfortunately, they didn't have any big pieces like I was looking for. But this one has a beautiful flat end on it. And I know from experience that I can connect these using hot glue to the sides of my tubs. And they stay very, very sturdy and it can hold the weight of a gecko. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a drill with a hole saw that's appropriately sized. And I'm going to put a hole right down the middle of it. And this cup is going to fit in that hole very nicely and then we're gonna connect it to his cage. So I'll go put that hole in there now and we'll be right back. All right, so I'm back now. As you can see, this thing cut clean through, nice, perfect round hole. And lo and behold, we have success. It fits that cup perfectly. Doesn't go through, I can push on it. It is in there, it's solid. Now all we have to do is glue it into the new tub. All right, so now we're back to the finished product. DIY gecko feeding ledge out of cork bark. The big reveal. There it is. Just a small little ledge. Holds that bowl of PNG in nice and perfectly. And see it's connected with hot glue. And I am putting way more than 40 some odd grams of weight on there, so it's not going anywhere. This is simplistic paper towel bottom, artificial plant enclosure that I set up for my brand new gecko that I just received yesterday. Right down here, not fired up right now, but a beautiful pinstripe, almost quad stripe, adult male. Don't have a name for him yet, so anybody wants to recommend one space themed, I like to keep it space themed because we are gecko galaxy. And that's my final project for the day. Everybody is fed, watered, cleaned, and I got my bioactive enclosures reseeded. I got a feeding ledge for this guy. Good day. <laughs>